The Mossy Creek is one of, if not the most, prestigious trout fisheries in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Cold and clear, this spring creek flows to the fields and farmlands of central Virginia, near Harrisonburg. Known for its wily brown trout, this stream provides one of the most unique trout fishing experiences in the state. Unlike many of Virginia's trout streams, it flows through a valley rather than the Appalachian Mountains. To help me understand the Mossy Creek's unique history and ecology, I spoke with Brian Trow, co-owner of Mossy Creek Fly Fishing. Why is the Mossy Creek a unique environment? Several hundred years ago, most of the streams that are in the valley were trout streams. So the range of the trout has changed as people have settled and as people have changed the land use. Basically what happened was all the brook trout that lived in this part of Virginia didn't just reside at the highest elevations. They resided all the way down, all the way into the Shenandoah River. And then as people settled the land, cleared the land, farmed the land, cut down trees, water temperatures were raised, siltation happened. And so the, the trout we're kind of left with just uh, the sanctuaries up high. However, we've got all these great spring creeks here in the Shenandoah Valley that are spring fed. And so they're still suitable for trout. The problem with that is uh, most of them are private. So Mossy Creek is not unique in the sense that it's the only spring creek around. It's just unique that it's one of the few that has a cooperative that have given fly fishermen access to it. What is the story behind this creek's unusual protection? Basically, there was a cooperative that was formed. This is decades ago in the 80s. And it was formed between the Department of Game Inland Fisheries as kind of the state entity and Trout Unlimited as a cold water conservation nonprofit kind of coordinating and then landowners and the landowners all up and down the creek. And essentially the Department of Game knew that the stream would be a great trout fishery. So they approached the landowners and um, gave them several different options on management if they were to, in fact, agree to let people fish. And the landowners chose fly fishing. Virginia had, um, had no fly fishing, only water. And so that's how it was created. It was the wishes of the landowners, the folks that allow people to fish, just kind of do so out of the good of their heart. How has your shop been involved in the protection of the Mossy Creek? We opened 18 years ago. We have coordinated cleanups. My twin brother, Colby, who owns a shop with me, we volunteered quite a bit with the state. They need help and volunteers and manpower. So we would help them shock. I electrofished the creek with them for years, you know, what the numbers were like, taking a look at the macro invertebrates and uh, all that stuff. We have coordinated a lot of work out there. So because there's multiple properties, because you're going from one farm to the next, there's, there's fences. And those have to be crossed. So we've always built these styles, which are, you know, wooden stairs, essentially, they go up and over. And those require maintenance and they require actually being rebuilt every so often. We're trying to protect access to the stream indefinitely. And we're working with UVA Law Center and with others trying our best to figure out a way to secure an angler easement on the properties. Mr. Trow then explained what challenges private landowners encounter when they allow the public to access their property. A lot of people would say, why would I want the general public just in my backyard? They're going to litter. They're going to bring their pets. Like, it, you know, it's a liability. And so they have to add some sort of incentive uh, for these types of asks, in my opinion. You know, whether it be in the form of a tax credit, allowing people to put them in some sort of conservation easement that the state then manages. Um, so we're working on some of these problems because all it takes is one or two of what I call like the keystone landowners to sell or to pass away. And that'll be it. It'll be gone. Uh, that's all it takes. And uh, the biggest risk really to the creek is an angler buying property. There's a lot of fishermen who don't want to share the water. I mean, if you spent a million dollars on two miles of Spring Creek and the state came and asked you if everybody could come and fish it, the answer would most likely be no. What environmental challenges currently face this creek? There are environmental factors that uh, don't help it. I mean, when it opened up in the 80s, there was a cow on it every five feet. And people to this day still come in and they get all bent out of shape because they saw a cow in the stream. Well, there's nothing illegal about watering livestock in Virginia. As someone who's gotten granted permission to go fish on someone else's property, it's a very precarious situation to be in to, on the one hand, be allowed to go and enjoy their farm 
And on the other hand, try and go and tell them how to farm. The, the state, as well as Trout Unlimited, as well as the anglers need to walk a fine line and you know, try and work with farmers. If farmers need our help fencing livestock out or getting money together for drilling wells, we need to make sure that we're there ready to support them. What are some projects that have improved the Mossy Creek? And are there any opportunities for the public to get involved? Uh, we've had stream restoration jobs done. So sometimes you can just exclude the cattle and the creek can kind of, the banks can kind of grow up and heal themselves. Other times they can't and they need extra work. And we've done quite a few projects to scale back the banks, do stream plantings um, to try and get the vegetation to really hold and stabilize. The Department of Game Inland Fisheries always needs volunteers. They're more than happy. Uh, if you call them up and say, hey, I'm willing and able and I would like to help you all electrofish if you need an extra hand or if you need me there just to take measurements of fish. So, and then we'll, we have more projects. You know, we did that project in my backyard along with my neighbors and stuff. We took a dam out uh, three years ago. Um, a lot of that's heavy equipment work, but when all that was done, we had to plant thousands of willow whips. You know, that takes people. So, you know, if people want to help volunteer, they can. They can do it through the shop here or they can do it through Trout Unlimited. It's an awesome place to fish, an awesome fishery. It's challenging. Uh, it keeps people coming back because it's, it's not an easy creek to go catch a lot of fish, but you can catch something really special. I hope you'll take a few moments to visit my website at www.flyfishingva.org in order to learn more about this video as well as ways you can help support one of my favorite environmental organizations, the Virginia Council of Trout Unlimited.